And before I get into this next question, listen, I'm telling you the real 110% truth. I'm giving you the real tea. I'm not gatekeeping anything because if you're really interested in this surgery, I want you to know what to expect. <laughs> your girl Chi welcome to my youtube channel if you're new here make sure that you hit that subscribe button and y'all go ahead and turn on your post notifications so you'll know every single time that I post a new video so for today's video guys it is the long-awaited BBL Q&A you guys have been asking me for this and I just kind of wanted to wait until I was like three months so I could give you all the real tea and just like have everything for you guys so go ahead and get you a snack get comfortable sis and stay tuned so guys, I got all these questions for the questions y'all were asking in my BBL vlogs, and then a lot of you guys have been DMing me on Instagram. Also, follow me on Instagram if you're not, okay? But yeah, so I got all the questions here on my phone, so I'm just gonna, you know, answer y'all's questions. And before I even start, I just wanna thank you guys so much for all of the love and support on my BBL vlogs. Like, you guys were so sweet to me, my mom, and my sister. We read your comments, and we are just so thankful. Like, it was just so nice and heart, you know, heartwarming. But anyway, honey, let's get started. So the first question is, what did I get done? Guys, I got a BBL with 360 lipo and arm lipo. For those of you guys who don't know, a BBL is a Brazilian butt lift. And basically what they do is just take fat from like other places in your body and put it into your butt. They can even put it in your hips and just like give you a nice little shape. And then 360 lipo, they suck the fat out from like around your like stomach. So like your back, your stomach, the love handles, under bra fat, like all that is 360 lipo. And um, arm lipo, of course, is just like liposuction of the arm. And I definitely recommend if you're going to get a BBL and you have chunkier arms go ahead and get the arm lipo Because it just kind of like makes you look more snatched. Okay, so the next question is why did I get a BBL? I know that BBLs are really trendy right now, but I've literally wanted a BBL since I was 19 y'all Like I've literally been looking up doctors since like 2016 and doing my research and learning more about the surgery I was skinnier back then but like I've always just kind of like never had a butt It's just not in my genetics and I work out a lot. It does not matter how many squats I do like it's, I mean, me having a butt is just not in the cards so I was like I want a butt like I've always wanted a butt I have been saving my money forever and I was just like you know what I'm gonna get this like I'm gonna treat myself to something nice so that's what I did I'm kind of glad though I didn't get the BBL back when I was 19 because like my body has changed so much as you get older and develop like you're gonna get your grown woman weight like I'm 25 I think that's like a good time to like if you really want a BBL to get one because I feel like if I was younger a lot of my fat would have died off for one and you know your body just changes a lot as you get older so I think now like I'm cool like <laughs> got my grown woman weight, got my body like it's all good alright so the next question is what was your height weight and waist size before and after surgery so before surgery guys I'm 5'9 and before surgery I weighed 197 and um, my waist was like a 44 like got a big ass like <laughs> stomach like my weight really just goes to my stomach and my back really where my weight goes so like my stomach was really big and after surgery I'm actually surprised that I still weighed the same I was expecting to like lose weight but I'm like 195 now so like I'm still like the same weight I don't know if you think this is like a weight loss surgery it's really not like he's really just moving your fat to like other places so you really just keep in mind you're probably gonna weigh the same after and my waist size is a 29 like <laughs> baby your girl is super <sniffs> snatched all right so next question is who was your doctor and what surgery center did you go to my doctor is dr williams of 305 plastic surgery in miami so why did i choose dr williams i absolutely just fell in love with dr williams work for one um i love his og lipo technique and if you don't know what the og lipo technique is he basically kind of just follows the curvature of your body so he kind of like follows your shape and he'll give you hips it's just very flattering um it's like natural a nice curve and i was just like yeah i need that like i just love Love all his work then I also love the fact that he is double board certified and that basically just means that he is certified to perform plastic surgery any like doctor any dentist like pediatrician anybody could like do a BBL surgery so it's very important to make sure that you get a doctor that is certified and if you're doing your research make sure you hit up realself.com that's like basically like where you get the T on all the surgeons so like make sure you're on real self heavy because they have so much important information and I learned he was double board certified he has zero deaths like so many things just made me feel more comfortable with picking him as my surgeon 
and not to mention he's also very very informative on his Instagram on his YouTube channel like I was really doing my research honey like and I just love that there was so much information for me to know from my specific doctor and before I get into this next question listen I'm telling you the real 110% truth I'm giving you the real tea I'm not gatekeeping anything because if you're really interested in this surgery I want you to know what to expect so what did I not like about dr. Williams and 305 plastic surgery let's start with 305 plastic surgery guys that surgery center is the most unorganized surgery center I don't even let me tell you my experience with them so in the beginning when you're interested in the surgery when I tell you they are on it they're like send your pictures send your uh, measurements da 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 like we got you like what do you want done when do you want it they will hound you every single day be pressing you like you're like damn why are you calling me again they were pressing me so hard y'all I was like oh my gosh I need to put this deposit down before I lose my day and not to mention y'all he's really like booked when I booked him that was like June 2020 um like last year right so when I had booked him he was booked until 2022 so I was like oh no like listen I would love to like be able to get um, my surgery before 2022 I didn't want to wait because like right now it's just a good time for me in my life to get it I'm not even gonna lie to y'all I pulled the YouTube card because I was like I don't want to wait and like is there any way I could like you know find a date for me you know what I'm saying and they're like yeah well you do YouTube we can find a date for you we can make it work come to find out you can actually kind of like skip the line if you pay like an extra 2500 but they just let me skip the line because I have a YouTube channel so my coordinator asked me the day I wanted and I told her the day right when I tell you after that it was like look there are no other days in June this month that you need to put your deposit down I'm telling you I was stressed I remember calling my best friend I was in the parking lot of a Hobby Lobby I was like she's, she's saying the date's gone should I just put it down should I put it down and she was like girl you've been wanting this since we're 19 da, 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 da. you've been talking about it go ahead and do it so keep in mind y'all they were so attentive when they were trying to get that deposit the deposit is a thousand dollars by the way they were so attentive once they got that deposit honey I never heard back from them when I tell you to even get in contact with them is damn near impossible and God forbid you get Claudia as a coordinator that's the worst coordinator in 305 plastic surgery y'all she was my coordinator I got no information when I was the one who was like okay when do I need to send my test in like it was really me making everything go when I tell you the week of I hadn't even heard from her the, um, this is the week I'm going to Miami so like once I had submitted my blood work everything was all good I did not hear from her I'm like so what do I need to do what time do I need to come after that y'all I spazzed on them so hard they gave me a whole new coordinator she was so nice she got everything done for me but yeah it was just frustrating because it's like I can't call y'all I can't email y'all you sit on the phone with them for like damn near hours like and they don't call you back they don't text you so it was just frustrating but finally like during that week they gave me a different coordinator and everything went smoothly the next question what I don't like about dr. Williams and I'm just gonna be real with you guys dr. Williams is a great 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 doctor I'm not gonna lie to you I think I look good anyone who goes to him looks good even when I was in the surgery center just seeing the girls he had done we all looked good but if you're looking to have like a relationship with your doctor dr. Williams is not that doctor when I tell you guys I met this man he I didn't even meet him at my pre-op right I met him like 15 minutes before surgery and granted he's nice he's not like everybody says he's like mean and cold he was nice like he was talking to me we were chatting but what annoyed me was like sir I'm just now meeting you I want to kind of tell you about my body it's like he's just drawing me up like okay this one I'm gonna do this one I'm gonna do this one I'm gonna do and it's just like he's talking to me and telling me like stories on the side it's like I didn't have like an opportunity to kind of tell him what I wanted so that was very very frustrating so honestly I'm not even gonna lie to y'all I was like afraid to tell dr. Williams what I wanted because that same week that I had my surgery scheduled for this girl had went down there too and she kind of told him like this is what I want this is what I want you to do this is my wish pick and y'all know he hates wish picks he don't want you to tell him what to do and she did that and literally he was like I'm sorry I'm not the surgeon for you canceled her surgery when I tell you that girl was in the Facebook group crying like I spent this 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 and this I can't get my money back like she was like staying at like a really expensive recovery center couldn't get her money back like just he just canceled her surgery so I was not trying to piss him off honey like I had just met him too like I'm not trying to make him mad I really wasn't comfortable you know like telling him what I wanted and I feel like if you're performing my surgery like and I'm telling you what I want you should just like listen to me like I get your judgment but still like let me put my input in so that was really annoying and then not to mention y'all like 
if you know or you foresee yourself, I guess no one really foresees themselves having complications, Dr. Williams is also not the surgeon for you. When I tell y'all, I literally was in my hotel room. I was not feeling good at all. And I'm trying to call them just like to ask them what's going on. When I tell y'all I could not get in contact with nobody, I was like, I want to talk to the surgeon. They're like, oh, well, sorry, he's in surgery right now. He'll call you back. He never called me back. Even they would not like answer my calls. At one point, I'm like, damn, my sister's like, I have called them three times and they're not answering. Like, what is the meaning of this? You just had surgery. You know what I'm saying? Saying, like it's just little shit like that and then then not to mention if you watch my vlog you see in like um, when I was in the surgery center I felt like I was going to pass out and I asked them if they had water tell me why they had no water how are you performing surgeries in this surgery center and you don't have water girls are <laughs> girls are literally like damn near passing out and y'all tell me y'all don't have any water in here so it's just like shit like that and one more thing too this is when i was back home though i was six weeks post-op y'all and my incision under my boob right here was still open and i'm freaking out now because i'm like shouldn't have everything else had healed except that one incision i started you know seeing on google that like oh i have to go have surgery they have to like stitch it it's called like a butterfly stitch and i'm like oh my gosh i'm not about to go back to miami i've already spent all this money i don't know what to do i'm freaking out so i'm calling them calling them calling them they are not answering of course and it's so fucking annoying so i'm blowing up their phone blowing up their phone finally y'all i had to literally blow up their instagram like i was commenting on there saying, answer me, answer me, I just had surgery with you guys, what are y'all doing, da, da 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 Like I was blowing up their Instagram, messaging, messaging them, and finally they called me back. It eventually ended up healing, I think it was like seven weeks when it finally healed, but that's just so annoying to me, like, why do I have to do all that to get into contact with y'all? Like, I spent so much money having surgery with y'all, it's just annoying. I just feel like, with my experience with Dr. Williams and 305 Plastic Surgery, it's like, when you're in there, they're super nice, they are very sweet, I will say that, which is why I wasn't as annoyed when I finally got there because they are so 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 nice but it's just annoying like the communication aspect so keep that in mind so now into the cost of the surgery I know a lot of you guys want to know so um, at the time that I had did mine it was like a year ago I know his prices have probably changed since then I'm really not sure but when I had scheduled my BBL it was $6,500 and I paid the $1,000 deposit so I when I went to Miami I owed $5,500 and um, I decided when I got down there that I wanted to also add on arm lipo which was cool with them they let me and the arm lipo was $800 all right y'all so the hotel that I stayed at was called the element Miami and it's like a Marriott hotel it's 13 minutes away from 305 plastic surgery so that's really really good because keep in mind when you are coming back from surgery you don't want to be in the car like for hours even like I think 30 minutes is too long to be in the car after such a serious surgery so just try and find somewhere close there are other hotels that are even closer but that's the one that i found because they be booked so like if anything you take from this book that hotel as soon as you put your deposit down go ahead and book your hotel because they are super booked and then i also heard like that girls are like really messing up the hotel so a lot of them don't even want to take you if they know you're like having a bbl surgery so keep in mind try and find your hotel book it right away and I also stayed in Miami for a total of seven days. I went from June 2nd through the 9th. And I um, my pre-op was on the 3rd. And apparently if you miss pre-op, if you're late, like it pushes back your surgery. So I was like, I'm going to just come in a day early, get comfortable. And then after my surgery, which was on the 4th, I just stayed like at least five days to make sure everything was all good. So that's how long I stayed in Miami, like seven days. And I also do recommend getting a rental car. Um, you don't want to be in an Uber after something like that. I don't even think they would really want you in their Uber you know like because you're bleeding it's just a lot so get a rental car so the next question is how did I prepare for my BBL and basically guys you know I've always been like pretty active I work out a lot so I was working out it's really important for your iron levels to be you know good because you're gonna lose a lot of blood during the surgery so like I was taking my iron working out drinking a ton of water um, that's like how I physically prepared and how I mentally prepared y'all when I tell y'all I prayed about this I have prayed about it like the whole year but that month um, of my surgery the beginning of the month I fasted and prayed for two weeks so I did that I really just talked to God I prayed 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 y'all I prayed so much over this decision so I already knew like me and God were good when I came in I really was not nervous at all I think because I prayed so much and I just mentally was like okay I'm gonna have this surgery everything is gonna go well I'm gonna have the body I want like that's how I mentally prepared all right, so now we're on the second section of questions, my little during section. So you guys asked me what I packed when I, you know, went on the trip. And I have a whole entire video detailing every single thing that I packed. I will link it in the description box down below so you can watch that. I'm not going to go into it just to save time, but if you really, really want to know everything you need, I went into detail like crazy, so check out that video. One thing I did learn when I went down there 
when you get a robe get a thick robe because out of surgery you're gonna be really cold but also get a thin robe just to wear around because like you get really hot too your your temperature be flush away and honey like I don't know what it was but I would be like super cold and super hot so the next question was how was my pain during surgery so my pain during surgery y'all um after the surgery really was not that bad i'm not even gonna lie to you because i honestly hardly remember the pain and i remember when i had broke my ankle like that's a pain i'll never forget so like i really don't remember the bbl pain so i feel like it really was not that bad <laughs> and i think part of the reason it wasn't so bad was because i really stayed on top of my painkillers you know like they prescribed me percocets so like on the hour at, like when it was time like i had an alarm going honey i was on top of my medicine so i really did not feel like that much pain but i will say like what I felt coming out of surgery that was very memorable to me was like I was so cold y'all like y'all remember in the video like I was like I was so internally cold I was like my teeth were shivering like chattering I really was freezing cold so I remember that but I don't really remember the pain it did kind of hurt when I was getting into the trunk of the car and coming out but it wasn't like super insane intense pain I'm not gonna lie to you what I will say is what I learned in this surgery is that it really was not that painful. It's more of like a soreness. Um, it's like going to the gym and like having that soreness times a thousand. And I think maybe the reason why it didn't bother me as much is like when I go to the gym, I love being sore. Like I love when my body's sore. So like, so the pain was just basically like being sore times a thousand. The next question is who did your massages in Miami? So I really, really want to praise this company because when I tell y'all, I forgot to book my massages. I literally came to my, I got down to Miami and I have realized I did not book my massages. And now I'm freaking out because I'm trying to find people to do my massages. I'm calling everywhere. No one has like availability. Nobody can come. And I'm just like, what am I going to do? Like these massages are like freaking mandatory damn near. And then like 305, they give you free massages after your surgery. I think you have like five free ones. Apparently the massages are like absolutely terrible. So I was like, no, I need to find like a really, really good massage person. So I went on Instagram and I found the squeeze lady. I think her name is Karatu on Instagram or something like that. And when I tell y'all, y'all, she was on it. Like she was like super nice. I told her I was freaking out. I was scared. I didn't know what to do. She was like, don't worry. Like I got you. I'm going to send you somebody. Like don't stress. And she really, really, really calmed my nerves. She found me somebody really quickly and they did a great job. So I definitely highly recommend the squeeze lady. Um, I think it's Karatu on Instagram. I'm going to tag everything in the description box, of course. But yeah, her massage therapists are really, really amazing. They did a great job and they were super nice and it was great. Did the massages hurt? So honestly, my massages really did not hurt. What kind of hurt was when they would open the incision and kind of like, you know, open it up? That hurt. But besides that, it didn't really hurt. It was just more so disgusting. I'm not even going to lie to you. I was When she would do my massages and get the fluid out, it would literally be like pshh like spraying across the room it was so nasty so i think i was just more so disgusted it didn't hurt only when she would like open my incisions that's the only thing that really hurt but they kind of felt good to me like it really was not that bad i don't know i think you really have to have like your own experience with things because as i was doing my research and seeing all the things that other girls would say they experienced with like the pain i really did not have that and i was expecting in my head that it was going to be so bad so i guess when it wasn't you know like it's just it was not that bad the next question is, who did my massages when I got back to Atlanta? She was a godsend because if you watched my second BBL vlog, you already know like I was having so many problems with this one like terrible massage company. And she came and saved the day. Um, I go to Massage Solutions. I think they just got a new location, so I'm going to put all that information in the description box down below. But um, Diane is really nice. Carlin is really, really nice. Like, they are really good. Tell you I'm so excited. I have another massage tomorrow, honey, and I cannot wait for them to get me like super snatched. <laughs> All right, love, so now we are in the post section of my BBL Q&A. And the next question is, how was the arm lipo? So for the arm lipo, what I will say, guys, the arm lipo was not as bad as everyone says. Nothing is, has been as bad as everyone says, but I know we're all going to have, like, our own different experiences. I have a different body from you, so we're all going to have, like, different experiences. But, like, I expected the arm lipo to be really painful. The only thing is, like, lifting up my arms for, like, that first three, four weeks was, I was just sore. It was like sore. Um, right out of surgery, of course, it was super painful. Like I really could not um, lift up my arms really. But as time progressed, you know, it started going away. And I will say too, I was bruised for a long, long time on my arm. I was bruised all over my body. I kind of bruised easily, but my arms were bruised for so long. I was like, is, the, is, is it gonna go back? <laughs> At one point I was like, is the color even gonna go back? So I was really bruised on my arms for a while. I was not expecting that. So the next question is, what was your recovery time after surgery and when did you basically start feeling like yourself again? So honestly, 
Um, with this BBL surgery, the surgery really is not that bad. It's the recovery that is hell. I'm not going to lie to you. Because you really are just very, very uncomfortable. You can't sit on your butt. You can't sit on your sides. You're only allowed to lay on your stomach. And when I tell you, you think it's not that bad. Because I'm like, I sleep on my stomach. So I was like, oh, this is going to be a breeze. Like, I love sleeping on my stomach. I don't think I'll have any issues. When I tell you, when you're only allowed to sleep on your stomach, you will hate sleeping on your stomach. And on top of that, when you're fresh out of surgery, taking your, um, you know, pain medication, the Percocets, oh, you're all good. But when you have to switch to that Tylenol, honey, oh my gosh, when I came back home and was taking the Tylenol, I started feeling everything. Cause like, I really did not feel much when I was on the Percocets, but when I came back and I was taking the Tylenol, girl, I felt everything. I was so uncomfortable. That first week home was awful, guys. Like, it was so hard for me to lay on my stomach. And on top of that, I had got my period. Now I'm like, I can't even take ibuprofen. Like, they tell you not to take ibuprofen. So, like, I'm really feeling the cramps, feeling the soreness. Like, it's just, it was just so hard. And I had to sleep on my stomach. Woo, honey. That sleeping on your stomach, those first two, three weeks is really, really hard. But after that, it becomes a little easier. But, like, just, like, you just really don't feel comfortable. So the next question is, what can you do during recovery? During recovery, you can't really do too much, at least I think for like those first two weeks for me, like I was kind of laying around and you know, I was super sore. You can't sit on your butt. Um, I didn't start sitting on my BBL pillow until I was like four, six weeks. I'm not gonna lie to you. I did not want to lose any fat in my butt at all. Like I really did not sit on my butt until I was officially two months. I was like in Puerto Rico, sat on my butt. That was the first time. So I really just... Couldn't really do much. I watched a lot of TV. You know, I was in school, so I did my assignments, and it was really hard to do my assignments. I'm not even gonna lie. I had to stand, and you know, I just had the surgery. It was just a lot. And that like first two weeks, just lay down, chill, and you know, after that, you you'll be able to do more stuff. Cause like after two weeks, I was able to do more stuff. So when did I start feeling like myself again? I think I really started feeling like myself again. <sighs> really, in like two months, y'all. <laughs> really, like like two. I'm really just now kind of starting to feel like myself. Every really, like two three months. Um. So yeah. So the next question is, how long did you wait until you sat on your butt? Um, I did not sit on my butt for two months. And how did my butt feel when I finally sat on my butt? So let me tell y'all, the first time I sat on my butt was on a girl's trip to Puerto Rico. And when I tell you, it just felt so weird. Sometimes even when I sit on it now and I'm at three months, it kind of feels weird. It's kind of just now kind of starting to feel my, like mine, but it does kind of feel like a foreign object. And one thing that I did notice when I sat on it, the next morning, it kind of like swelled up a little bit. Like it kind of plumped up a little bit. I really don't know why, but that's one thing that I noticed. Um, and it just feels weird. And it did also kind of hurt. I'm not going to lie to you. Like it, it hurt. <laughs> it hurt. And the next question is, how long did you wear your faja for? I wore my, I still wear my faja to this day. They say you're supposed to wear it 24-7 for the first six weeks. Yeah. So the first six weeks, you're supposed to wear it 24-7. And then after six weeks, you can wear it um, for half the day or to sleep. But I always wear my faja. Honestly, like, I am always in my faja because I just like how I look when I come out of it. Like, it just really gets you snatched. And you know you really, really need that compression out of surgery. Like, you really need that compression. If there's one thing you take, keep that faha on, girl. Like, wear your faha, wear your phones, your boards, all that good stuff. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you though, I stopped wearing my phones and boards after I think like three weeks because like, it was just so uncomfortable. And it was really hard to put on, so I stopped. And my stomach is really good. I don't have fibrosis or anything like that, so I was okay. But, I mean, don't listen to me though. <laughs> do what you gotta do, do your own thing, girl. But me personally, like, I didn't wear my thumbs and boards do you still get massages yes I have a massage tomorrow like I said earlier and yeah I still get massages I get them like once a month now but I really really do love the massages what to do for the best results for the best results wear your faja drink a lot of water stay away from sodium sodium is so bad you will you know you're trying you have so much water weight you're trying to lose stay away from sodium it's gonna make you swell no 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 drink your pineapple juice drink your water Make sure that you are getting your massages. They are so important, y'all. Always stay on top of your massages. And also, size down in your fajas as they like start to get loose. That is so important because compression is so important. If you're not sizing down in those fajas, then what's the point? You have got to compress your body. All right, y'all. So the last question, we are almost done, um, is how much I spent in total. So in total, I think I spent around... $14,000 um, that included the surgery my plane ticket my sister's plane ticket my mom's plane ticket our hotel um, the rental car they helped me pay for the rental car because they're so nice because I was spending so much money our groceries down there um, what else 
Oh, all my Fajas, all my supplies, um, my massages there, and my massages here in Atlanta. And I think that's about it. If I'm forgetting anything, I'll just put it on the screen. <laughs> but I think that's about it. Mind that a lot of expenses come, especially things you don't even see coming. Um, and one thing I will say too, massages in Miami are way cheaper than massages in Atlanta. Like, and that's because there's like literally a surplus of lymphatic drainage massages um, massages in Miami but like in Atlanta like it's so rare like massages here are so expensive they're like a hundred dollars each I think in Miami they're like 75 so keep that in mind a lot of unexpected expenses come you have to get new Fajas they're like $150 a piece so budget honey and honestly you shouldn't even be getting a BBL if it's gonna like wipe out your savings like you need to budget you need to plan and you know pay off that booty and girl you don't need care credit you're a boss like sit down focus stack your bread and get the surgery girl because I love it and you'll probably love it too but yeah y'all that is the end of my BBL Q&A hopefully I was able to answer all the questions you guys have been asking me and yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe have a blessed day